Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Family Bites. Today, we're going to go through five high impact research back study techniques. Okay, so let's get going. So first of all, for those who don't know, um, my name is Dr. Vincent and I'm a principal at Fairview International Schools uh, Malaysia. Uh, this is my campus, Fairview International School Kuala Lumpur, where I'm the principal over there. All right, let's get going quickly, okay? So the five research back study techniques that you need to know about are one, pre-testing, spaced versus massed practice, self-quizzing, interleaving practice, paraphrasing and reflecting. Now I'm gonna go through these one by one, nice and slow, so you're gonna be able to follow this real easy, okay? So the first one, pre-testing is the process of taking a test even though you don't know what the whole thing is about. So let's say you're learning something about World War II, you take a test, and even though you're probably gonna score really, really badly, it's okay, then you learn what you need to learn about World War II, and then you try and test again and you see what happens. Research tells us that pre-testing, even though you do really badly on the first test, improves achievement levels by 74% when compared to just studying alone. That's absolutely astounding. Okay. It also promotes a really healthy uh, mindset of learning how to fail well and fail often and get comfortable with making mistakes. And understanding that mistakes don't mean that you're a bad person, it just may, means you made a mistake and it's totally fine and it's a part of life. The second really important technique is called spaced practice. Now, most of us, what we do, like Julie over here on the left, we do this massive long hour sessions where we really jam everything together. But what science tells us is spacing practice out over a period of time is far more effective than one giant concentrated practice. So if you're like me, who and I've got this really bad habit where I like to cram things right at the end because I procrastinate or I don't manage my time really well, then this is a really good opportunity for you to change the way that you learn. So space it out over a couple of days uh, and small bites so you don't cram everything at one go. Now this requires some organization, but it's not too hard. The third really important one is self-quizzing, like taking lots of tests. So if you learn something uh, about uh, Malaysian history and uh, you really want to you know, get it really into your head, take a couple of tests. And it's not about trying to memorize questions. Tests actually promote that retention, driving your brain to recall and recall and recall. And it improves your academic achievement by 50% as opposed to just reading and rereading that, that material again, okay? Totally easy way of doing things. Just take any test you want on that topic. So when I learn a topic, I usually try and make sure I've got a nice bank of questions I can draw from. So I just have lots and lots of tests and I practice that way and my retention is way higher. Another little tip for you guys, you can have your friend quiz you as well. And that's also a form of quizzing. Interleaving practice. Now don't worry about this one. This one's a bit, it's a big word, but it's really easy. So if you've got one concept uh, and let's say it's a, a math concept, don't just repeat the same question that practices that concept again and again and again and again and again and again. Well, yeah, most people think that you get mastery over that, but actually after a while, you lose that. So just like space practice, we like to space it out a little bit and interleaving is mixing it up with other concepts that require you to use your brain, but using the same context. Okay, so for interleaving practice, it's a big word, but what I'm sharing with you basically is don't jam it all together and just go for mastery. So let's say we're learning about the respiratory system in the lungs. Don't just keep memorizing and memorizing and repeating the same questions over and over again that ask you to label things again and again and again. Instead, maybe try and uh, try a question about uh, practice the memorization of the names because it's really important, uh, the names of the different parts of the lung, and then maybe do something about the physiology of the lung, how the lung works by expanding and contracting, and then do a little bit about the blood vessels and then come back again 
to the heart labeling. So spread it out. Don't just go labeling crazy and go memorizing all the different names of the lungs again and again and again. You're going to get mastery for a short time, but over a period of time, you're going to lose it. So it's better to cycle around the different aspects of the respiratory system than just jam only on one skill. The skill, of course, I was talking about there was memorizing the names of the heart. You could, oh, sorry, the lungs. You could, of course, do, make a bad habit out of memorizing the, uh, the the labels of the heart if you wanted to as well. But that would be doing exactly the same bad habit. So mix up your your practice, your questions. Uh, approach the same topic from different angles so that it improves retention. This guy re improves retention by up to seventy five percent as opposed to block practice. Block practice is just doing one thing again and again and again. Okay. And finally, this I love, paraphrase and reflect. So the key idea is that here is paraphrase what you learn. If te the teacher teaches you one thing or if you learn one thing, turn it into your own words and try to talk it out. Walk around the room, just talk about the whole thing. Second part, think about how this relates to you and then ask questions. Now, I love that last bit about asking questions. Ask questions from your friends, your teachers. Ask questions from absolutely anybody. Send a message to somebody on social media. Find an important author or a good researcher or a doctor. And just blast some questions and find out. When you ask questions, you really dig into that topic and you dig that curiosity and you, you exercise those muscles in your head. So thank you very much for listening to our effective research-based study questions. Uh, what I'd like to share with you is, if you're a Fairview student, you already use all of these things inside your classroom. You're going to be taught all of these study strategies naturally in your ATL skills in the IB program. And if you don't know about us, then please contact us at any of these uh, contact details.